I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Ms. Fountain channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here, we explore a range of topics from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge, spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on our journey of discovery. In this session, we're going to look at forensic limnology. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to begin with a definition of a few terms. The first one being forensic limnology which is the study of aquatic ecosystems in order to obtain evidence for criminal investigations. It's the study of aquatic ecosystems in order to obtain evidence for criminal investigations. The other terms that you're going to define is uh, the atoms. These are microscopic unicellular photosynthesizing algae present in all aquatic habitats made of silica and less than 200 microns of in size. The other term is a postmortem submission. This is the period between entry into water and recovery of the dead body or of the body. Let's uh, look at diatoms from drowned body. We've said diatoms are microscopic unicellular photosynthesizing algae present in all aquatic habitats. They are made of silica and they are less than a 200 microns in size. Uh, it's important to note that uh, thousands of different species have, uh, there are thousands of different species of diatoms which have unique uh, environmental optima. Also, they have unique and easily identifiable morpholo morphology, and that is under light microscope. That is an image of uh, diatoms. That is a microscopic image. We think they are in different shapes, in different sizes. Yeah. Now let's look at uh, autopsy and sample collection. Uh, once the body is recovered, the normal procedure follows. The normal forensic procedures follow and when it comes to autopsy uh, a thorough autopsy is conducted on the drowned body then biological samples are collected and some of these biological samples that are collected include lung tissues bone marrow as well as uh, other potentially diatom containing fluids should note that uh, about five grams of marrow should be taken from a victim and it's placed in a nitric acid solution and then burnt in, in a furnace allowing the release of diatoms. That's how these diatoms are now obtained from the sample and then the you know, microscopic comparison procedure takes place to compare the diatoms because we find that uh, Diatoms are, there are different species and different species are found in different loca geographical locations. Like now you have those that are found in uh, fresh water, you have those that are found in uh, salty water. And also in the fresh and salty water, the, the different geographical, loca geographical locations have uh, different species of these diatoms. In a, in a forensic analysis or forensic investigation, forensic limnology seeks to answer the following questions. Did the victim drown? Was the victim placed in water following death by another cause? That is, were they alive before they, they fell into the water? Or were they dead before going into the water or before being dumped or thrown into the water. Also, the third question is, has the victim moved from the scene of death? And under that, it's important to note that uh, in diatom analysis, diatoms in water are inhaled into the victim. They penetrate the alveolar system. They enter blood circulation. 
they are deposited in major organs like the brain, bone marrow, kidneys, etc. So if a person drowns, if death is by drowning, that that is a they were alive before they fell into the water. Like they fell in the water when they were alive, they are going to be they are still inhaling, they are still breathing in. So in the process they are going to breathe in and the water that or, or the diatom the diatoms that are present in that water are going to be inhaled and they're going to be to penetrate into the alveolar system. They're going to enter the blood circulation. They're going to enter the major organs that is the brain, kidneys, bone marrow and others. Uh, and therefore, if uh, like now to determine was the victim placed in water following death by another cause, if these uh, diatoms are found in these major organs like the brain, that's going to show they were alive before they fell into that water and vice versa. Uh, let's look at the applications of uh, forensic limnology. We have various uh, all different applications of forensic limnology. Uh, these are some of them. One, link suspects to crime scenes. We say datums are found in uh, in aquatic habitats. Therefore, if a suspect was in that aquatic habitat, these datums are gonna stick on to their clothes, to their footwear. Or even their body but mostly if they are found in their clothes or their body I mean their clothes or their footwear it's going to be easy to get the or to link that suspect to that crime scene because that after the comparison has been done of the the atoms that have been found on maybe the footwear and those of the crime scene and if they match that shows that the suspect was in that crime scene and now that is how forensic limnology links the suspect to the crime scene could also be linking them to maybe a victim because maybe the maybe one is already a suspect and there are other evidences that are leading to them and then after the analysis or the comparison of these diatoms, the ones that are found in the victim match with that of the suspect. They've been linked. That is the suspect and the the victim. So for forensic criminology links a suspect to crime scenes to victims. Yeah. Forensic criminology uh, is used to determine if the victim drowned at the site of uh, recovery. That means we've said uh, there are different species of uh, diatoms and the, these species vary according to the geographical locations. So if uh, a victim has been found at a, at a point, at a crime scene, which is a, let's name it A, and then they have a, on them, they have, or in them, they have diatoms that are different from those that are found in point A, they have those that, that are found in point B. That is going to show that where they've been recovered, that's not where they drowned initially. They were initially at point B. So maybe they just the water that has been carrying them to point A. That's how forensic criminology determined or is used to determine if the victim drowned at the site of, at the site, at the site of recovery. Also, is used to estimate how long the victim has been in water that is uh by estimating the post postmortem submission i mean postmortem submersion which is the period between the entry into water and the recovery of the body once that is estimated uh, forensic scientists are able to tell or to estimate how long the victim has been in water and another application of forensic uh, limnology is uh, to determine if death was caused by drowning. Uh, as you've said, uh, when one falls into the water and they're still alive, they're going to be breathing in and 
diatoms that are present in water are going to be inhaled and they're going to penetrate they're going to enter the blood circulation system they're going to be deposited in major organs so if these diatoms are found in in the victims major organs like maybe in the brain or maybe the bone marrow that shows that they they were alive when they fell into the water so uh drowning is going to be a cause of their death also if they were dead before before being thrown into the water these are since they are not breathing in and out these diatoms are not going to be deposited in these major organs they are not going to be in the circulatory system they might be in the breathing system like now in the lungs but they're not going to since the they, there has been cessation of life these are uh, diatoms are not going to be deposited in any other organs in the body therefore the the location where the diatoms have been found in the body is going to determine to help determine if the death was caused by drowning or not uh, since everything has two sides to it let's look at uh, the limitations of forensic limnology and the major limitation of this is that these diatoms can be present in people who have not drowned since we said that uh, diatoms are present in all aquatic habitats maybe that water is the same water that people have been using it's the same water that they've been using for drinking and all that all their uses so they're going to be having these diatoms are going to be present in their body because as they take the water they're also going to be taking in the diatoms that are in that water because diatoms are microscopic so they're going to be ingested with the water and they're going to be found in the systems of the of different people even those who have not drowned so it's it might be challenging to use uh, diatoms to determine if they were alive or even maybe even in the applications of uh, forensic limnology like now determining if the victim uh was alive before they fell into the water or not might be difficult because these diatoms can be even present in those who have not drowned yeah those are that's the major limitation of forensic limnology and that is the end of our session thank you for joining us we hope you've gained valuable insights and knowledge from today's video don't forget to subscribe